Hi everyone, it's a wet, gray winter weekend here in Tacoma, Washington. So I thought it would be a perfect opportunity to do a houseplant home tour. So welcome. Okay, so we're in our living room here in our 103 year old craftsman house. And I think the first thing that we wanna talk about is this gorgeous um, Hartley philodendron. So this was the first plant that we bought when we closed on our house four years ago. And it was the first thing that we, we brought into this space. It was a tiny little thing when we bought it. Um, and now, you know, several years later, it's grown into this really amazing looking plant and it's living its best life. So. I have a special place in my heart. Oh gosh, that was terrible. <laughs> um, for this plant, and you'll, you'll notice throughout the space, we've taken numerous cuttings, and so she has um, offspring all throughout the house. So this one is one of my dear favorite plants. And then also here on our mantle, we've got a prayer plant. Um, this one I really love, the pattern on the, on the leaves. I think it's just so beautiful. Um, and this one's, I, you know, I hear that prayer plants are kind of finicky, but this one, I don't, I don't remember what the cultivar is or the species, but, um, it's been pretty easy to take care of. So I'm very happy about that. And here next to that, we've got this gorgeous yellow orchid in this white urn. This is a recent acquisition. Um, you'll notice later on in the tour, I've got a lot of orchids that are not blooming, um, you know, I really, really love them, but I have a hard time getting them to rebloom. Um, I do have a viewer named Wanda, who I understand has a room full of orchids. So Wanda, if you're watching, I might hit you up for some tips <laughs> on how to get these to, to um, bloom successfully. Uh, but you'll notice throughout, um, you know, what I tend to do is group plants with other objects and um, I try and keep the planters and the, the, the stuff around the plants um, either in the same color or similar colors, just because I feel like it makes a nicer looking um, composition. Um, okay, why don't we look over here. So these are our shelves um, that we uh, DIY'd, if you remember that, um, that episode. Um, I tend to swap stuff a lot on these. You know, it's just, it's very flexible having just little ledges where you can kind of create different displays. Um, up here, you'll notice these are cuttings from the mother um, Hartley philodendron plant. And next to that, I've got some more cuttings. That's from a pothos um, that was gifted to us. And then um, on this side, we have our little Chinese money plant. This one, um, I find it's been easy to grow, but for some reason, like once the leaves get bigger, they'll yellow and drop and then it'll grow new leaves. So um, I'm not sure if that's just kind of what it feels like doing or if I'm, you know, there's, it's lacking nutrients or something. So I might have to research and see what I can find out about that. Um, here below, you'll see once again, more cuttings from the Hartleaf philodendron plant. And then this little plant here, which I really like, I think it's called a Dyskidia. Um, I'm not entirely sure. Uh, sometimes when you buy plants from the grocery store or whatever, it doesn't have, you know, the, the species on there. So it's, it's kind of hard to know what exactly it is. Um, here I've got this really interesting planter and this is a Peperomia tetragona. And I love how the leaves are just kind of spilling over the top. I think that looks really cool. And then down below here, we've got another cutting. This is from my uh, Raphrophora tetrasperma plant, um, the mini monstera. So, um, you know, this shelf has been just kind of a, a good home for all kinds of little cuttings and misfits. Um, here we've got another, I guess this is a succulent. I'm not entirely sure what this is, um, you know, but it's, it's cute. And you'll notice here, you know, I've kind of, I've kind of got like a black and white thing going. So, you know, I've got a tile, um, our little stormtrooper this Calathea ornata in a, in a black pot, um, a camera that we recently got at the antique store, and um, this little zebra, which was a gift from Chris's mom. 
um, from her trip to Africa. So this is a really uh, treasured little possession. So again, I just kind of try and, and group everything by color just so it, it just seems to go better. Um, here on our coffee table, so we've got um, some Tillandsia, so air plants. Um, I just kind of like how, I don't know, weird and, and wacky they look. So um, here I've got this one under a glass dome. And then um, this one just here. Um, we have these little lanterns, you know, with it being winter, it's nice to have some candlelight or, or lantern light, you know, in the evenings. And, um, you know, it's just, it's just kind of a joy to sit here and, and, and look at this uh, in the evenings. And there's the little blades on this uh, light bulb thing that are actually powered by the light given off by the lantern. So that's kind of fun. Um, okay, so moving on over here, we've got uh, Monstera Deliciosa. This, um, these were cuttings that I had in a vase um, last year. And so they've really grown in and put out new leaves. So it's looking nice and healthy. Um, you'll, I'll, I'll point it out later, but the mother plant from this ended up getting mealybugs. So I'm glad I have at least one of the offspring that is nice and bug free. And then up here on the mantle, we've got, uh, these are cuttings from my, um, oh gosh, I'm blanking on the name. Uh, but we'll come back to that because I can't remember what the name is right now. Um, you know, we've got a ZZ plant. This is a good plant to have just because it's really low maintenance. Um, and then, oh, sugar vine. This is what it's called, sugar vine. So I've got a big plant over there that we'll look at shortly. Um, again, you know, lots of objects in the same color. These little mushrooms, actually, I don't know if the batteries are dead, but, um, oh, you can't see them here, but they're actually little, they light up, which is kind of fun too. Um, and then um, the other big thing going on right now, this isn't houseplant related, but I want to talk about it anyway. My chair that I recently finished. Um, if you've seen some of the other episodes or if you happen to see the furniture design episode, um, this is a chair that I designed and my dad helped me build. So we, you know, kind of put the frame together with upholstery springs and I made the surround out of apple ply, plywood. Um, it's been a long time in coming, but I finally finished it and then had an upholstery shop make the cushions in this fabric that I found. And I think it turned out really nice. So I'm very pleased with that. Um, right here next to the chair is a tiny little jewel orchid in my terrarium. Um, I'm happy to see that it's putting out new leaves, so I think it's, it's doing well. They're a little bit curly, which I'm not entirely sure why that's happening. Um, hopefully it's just, you know, as it gets bigger, they'll, uh, they'll finish unfurling. But I, I, I think it's doing okay. And then um, up above here, we've got another philodendron. I believe this one is called philodendron micans. Um, the leaves are nice and have this velvety texture, which is really nice. Um, you know, it's, it's put out a lot of new growth. And what I like about this one too, is that it's climbing up this uh, macrame planter that Chris's niece made for me actually a couple of years ago. So it's, it's nice to see the, the philodendron sort of growing up that um, that planter. Okay, so here in this corner, we have um, kind of a new setup. So I don't know if you remember from any previous videos, but I used to have some African baskets up here on the wall, and we had a fish tank that unfortunately um, suffered a mishap while we were away during Christmas vacation, and the fish are sadly no longer with us. So. We took the fish tank away, and so I just figured it was a good chance to kind of redo this space. Um, so I put up this uh, frame, which uh, we bought at an antique store here in Tacoma. So, you know, took the baskets down, put the um, picture up, and then just kind of did like a new display here. This is a, um, a champagne bucket that I got um, in the antique store in New Valley, and so um, put some tulips in there and just kind of displayed some of my little, um, these are alebrijes, the little Mexican folk art carvings, which I think are so pretty. Um, you know, it's just kind of nice to see the tulips up against the black and then just the colorful um, little carvings there, I think just makes for, um, you know, a whimsical little 
display. And then also this is our entry table slash sewing machine with a marble top that we got for like 40 bucks at the antique store. So that was a good score. So with the baskets I took down, I decided to repurpose them or use them, display them in a different way. So I have here kind of a line of them going down the bench, which I think looks really nice. And this leads you to um, my Sansevieria or snake plant. Um, this one I've also had for a while and you know, I really love it. It's just kind of, um, the coloration on it is really pretty and I'm looking forward to um, it putting out new growth this spring. So I think that's it for this part of the living room. Why don't we um, walk over to the library and then we can see the plants there. And we're here. Okay, so this is the library. Um, one thing, I guess, with it being winter, I kind of tend to, you know, want the space to feel more cozy. And so part of the, the way that I do that is just by kind of bringing plants closer together. So, you know, just, it just kind of feels a little bit more, um, I kind of refer to it as maybe like cozy clutter, even though that sounds a little strange, but here we've got a little display that I set up recently. This is a little table that used to be out on the porch and I brought in for the winter. And so um, on top of it, I've put, um, I've got this staghorn fern that um, when I bought it last year, it came with a little wooden plaque thing so I could hang it on the wall. And I um, somehow managed to lose it. I think it's, I know it's somewhere in the basement, but I don't know where it is. So for now, I've got it in this, this pot here. And then this is a philodendron goldii uh, fun bun, I believe that it's called. Actually, it might be, might have been reclassified now, but, um, you know, and I think it needs to be repotted because, you know, I think the, the roots are sort of getting um, pot bound. So I'll have to repot that soon. And I've got a little cactus here. Um, I like to collect um, amethysts and, and other kind of quartz stones and stuff like that. So you'll see those throughout as well. And then our little, our little heart from Mexico, which we got on a trip a few years ago. Um, okay, why don't we look at over here? So um, this table is fairly new. Um, you know, it just seemed like a shame to have a window with no plants in it. So. That's kind of the reason for it. Um, here we've got a ficus lorata that was a gift from a friend that was moving away. And then, oh look, more cuttings from the Hartley Philodendron. So she is a prolific mother. And then here next to that, we have a Cliff Cotyledon Pendens, which I'm sure I'm completely mispronouncing. Uh, but I saw this at my local plant shop and just had to have it, so I brought it home. And then, to the left of that is um, this aloe plant. Um, this is a, a pot that, um, or like a little pouring vessel that I got in Mexico, and I just thought it would function well as a, as a planter pot, so I put that in there. I'm very pleased with that. And then here we've got, um, this is an aglionema, I believe. What is it, a Chinese evergreen, I think, is the common name. Um, it's got these really interesting little patterns on the on the leaves, which I think are really beautiful. Um, up above here, this is a uh, Peperomia Hope. And this is also a pretty recent acquisition. You can kind of see it's already putting out new growth. So that's really exciting to see. Um, I've been wanting these, wanting one of these for a long time. So I'm glad that I finally got it. And um, you know, just, I think it looks really nice in this little orchid planter. Um, here, this is another plant. Um, it starts with an A. I'm blinking on the name. I'll, I'll probably just put it, end up putting it on the screen. But um, this was also a fine. I think I got this at Lowe's or something. Um, it, you know, it started out fairly small, but you can see how much growth it's put out now. It's, it's kind of reaching down and, and about to touch the floor. Uh, you know, I, I just kind of seem to have a thing for hanging plants. You know, just, it just looks very jungly and wild. And that really appeals to me. So I'm hoping to get more of those kinds of plants as well. And speaking of hanging plants, so this is the um, sugar vine that I was mentioning earlier that I had taken the cuttings of. This one, as you can see, it's kind of, kind of gone crazy. So there's tendrils kind of growing out of everywhere all around the books. 
Um, I find that during the winter it tends to thin out a little bit, so some of the leaves will die back and you'll see kind of like the exposed stems. Um, and then every spring it'll just bounce back and, and put out a whole bunch of new growth. So, um, but this one, you know, again, I've, I've trimmed this several times and even still it still reaches down and touches the floor. So um, this one, yeah, it's not a very common plant, but I really, really love it. So if you happen to find one of these, I would really recommend getting it because they're, they're really nice. Um, here next to this, we have a philodendron Brazil. And this one also we bought as a tiny plant and you can see kind of it's put out um, new growth. So that's always really exciting to see. Um, here we've got it set on this little um, clamp um, display thing. So I covered this in a previous video. So if you're if if these sorts of things kind of appeal to you, you can check that video out too. I think I've got the link on there. And then this is a Hoya. Um, I don't remember. I think this maybe might be Puba Calyx. Um, but, um, I, you know, I really, really like Hoyas. They're just really easy to take care of. And again, this one, you can see it's sort of clambered up and wrapped around that little bucket. So, you know, it's just, it's always nice to just to let the plants do their thing and let them go crazy. And, um, you know, just, it just ends up looking more natural that way, I think. Okay. So here below we've got more plants. Um, this is a horsehead philodendron that I got from a local plant shop as a gift. And next to that we have, this is an alocasia. Um, it's looking really sad. I, I found it at my local grocery store. Um, this, this leaf that it's the new leaf that's put out looks healthier. So I'm, I'm hoping I can um, kind of nurse it back to health. And then here we've got an African violet. Um, this one's also really easy maintenance. Um, the flowers are so beautiful and just so vibrant. So it's always a pleasure to look at that. So here, this is another prized possession. This is a um, Anthurium clarinervium. Um, this was like a, a, a splurge plant. I'd been wanting one for a really long time. Um, you know, the, it seems to be doing well. The, some of the edges of the leaves have gotten crispy. I think it's because, you know, it's, it's winter and with the heater and stuff, the humidity is less than ideal. So um, I might need to invest in a humidifier, but, um, but so far it seems to be doing okay. And then I also want to point out, um, kind of here as part of this display, we have these little bulls from Mexico. Um, these are so beautiful. They're, um, they're made from gourds, and then like the inside of the gourd is lined with these little tiny beads in these really beautiful geometric patterns. Um, there's a lot of symbolism in there and you know um so like you know each shape represents something else in the mythology of the of the tribes that make them so um you know i've got several now and i think um i just i just think they're so beautiful and i can't imagine how long it takes to make each one so i'm glad i'm not the one that's doing that okay so here um we've got a nice uh big terrarium here uh, and i've got several plants in there so the main thing you'll see here is this is a pitcher plant. And so I don't know if you can see the pictures there, but um, so carnivorous plant, um, these like a lot of humidity. So that's why I've got it in here to hopefully help uh, keep it from drying out. Um, I was very pleased when a fly managed to make its way into uh, the house last week and I, <laughs> I killed it and managed to um, get it into the little pitcher. So hopefully it'll be happy. And then next to that, there's a little Fetonia plant, um, also a really good terrarium plant. Um, that one also tends to dry out quickly, so it's nice to just keep it in there in a more controlled environment. And then this plant here is a Philodendron gloriosum. Uh, this is a tiny, tiny plant. It's like a little two-inch pot, but you can see kind of that the leaves have already started getting quite big, so I don't know how long I'll be able to keep it in there, but for now, um, it seems to be doing well. So the idea will be to kind of transplant it um, up to one of the shelves once it gets big enough. And then here, oh gosh, so this is one of my problem children. This is a uh, Ficus Altissima, and this was also another grocery store find. Um, I struggled with this one early on because uh, I found that it really wants really bright light. So the second I moved it even just slightly away from the window, it would start dropping leaves. 
and then um, it, se- it put out a whole bunch of new growth and it seems to be doing okay. But then this summer, I noticed that it started getting like these black spots and um, I might have missed a watering. So I, I, that may be it. But I also had it in a west facing window. So I'm not sure if maybe it's like damage from too harsh of sunlight um, in the afternoons. So I've got it here. This is a south facing window, but with the rose bush outside, it kind of filters the light and it's also winter. So I'm hoping that it'll be happy here. But, um, you know, we've kind of had a love hate relationship. So hopefully we can work things out. Um, here, so this is a Syndapsis pictus plant. Um, this one, I, it's very beautiful, but it's also been really slow growing for me. I think, um, I think it seems to be picking up now, but it's also doing this weird thing where it's like putting out like really long tendrils, which I think is common, but um, I'm just kind of keeping my fingers crossed that it'll hopefully put out some leaves there. Or if not, I might have to trim that and then just kind of start over and see if it if it grows any bushier. Um, up above here, we've got some just orchid plants that are not in bloom. So I, I like to kind of use them as as filler just to bring in a little bit of green there, um, you know, in my little meditating frog, which is very fun. Okay, so one thing I wanted to mention before I forget is um, these little lights that Chris found and, and ordered some, um, they're actually made for fungus gnats. So that weird light kind of attracts them. And if, oh gosh, this is, looks really scary. But if you look back here, you can see a whole bunch of them <laughs> stuck in the back. Um, so the, um, I'll leave a link for those if you, if you have problems with fungus gnats. I, I find that they're really helpful. Um, of course, they don't get rid of all of them, but they do get rid of a lot. So um, I'll, I'll leave the link in the description. If we come around here, so I've got more plants here. Um, this is a, another philodendron. I think it might be a green Congo. Um, again, this was a, a purchase at my local Safeway grocery store, so they don't label them. <laughs> so um, I'll have to, I might end up actually using one of those apps that um, are supposed to help you identify plants, although I find those are a little bit hit and miss. Um, but this one's kind of interesting. I just like how it's, you know, low and, and it spreads out. So it just kind of makes sense to keep that kind of um, here next to this chair. And then this is another philodendron, um, also from the grocery store. I guess I get a lot of my plants from there. Um, this one, um, I think it might be a Xanadu. No, actually I've got a Xanadu over there. So I'm not entirely sure what this one is. Um, my sister back in Texas has a similar plant that is giant and gorgeous. And I was very envious. And so I wanted one for myself. Um, this was the closest I could find, but this is not nearly as big and beautiful as her plant. So I'm still envious. So Nancy, I might, I might come steal your plant. Okay. And then moving on. So here we've got, this is an Alocasia regal shields. This one, I also seem to have a love hate relationship with. It's very beautiful, but I find that, um, Every time it puts out a new leaf, like one dies. So it never really gets big and bushy. And um, I'm wondering if maybe it's just not getting enough light, uh, you know, or, or what I'm doing wrong. But um, although I seem to, to recall that it, I guess that's a common thing with alocasias, a common behavior. So, um, but it's, I mean, you know, it's just, it's really beautiful. My grandmother used to have a similar plant like this in her backyard uh, when I was a kid. At least I, re- I think I remember that. So it just kind of, um, it's a nice homage to my grandma. And then this is a um, Schifflera plant that we got as a gift when we moved um, here into our house. And, um, you know, this one's also kind of had some some sort of struggles um, trying to find the right spot for it. But um, you can see right here, it's putting out new growth. So at least right now, it seems to be pretty happy. Okay, so... Um, we're moving into the dining room now. This, oh yes, I forgot that one. Okay. Um, yes, I can't, um, go on without mentioning kind of one of the stars of the show here, which is the, um, Begonia Maculata. This one I bought as a tiny plant and look how gigantic it's gotten. Um, you might remember this. I probably, I usually have it here when I'm 
filming intros to my videos, so you might have seen this before, but I just, oh my gosh, I think these leaves are so beautiful. Um, you know, it tends to crisp up on the edges. Again, I think it's just because of the um, lower humidity during the winter, but even actually during the, the summertime, um, that, that tends to be common, but I still think it's gorgeous. And, um, you know, I have little bamboo stakes to kind of keep up with it, but I'm very quickly running out of um, more stakes to, to keep it going. So I think I'm gonna have to either trim it and take some cuttings or, um, or see how else we can support it. But um, this one's one of my absolute favorites. I just love it. Okay, so now uh, we can move on. So this is a ficus lorata, um, fiddly fig. This one I struggled a little bit initially just trying to find the right location and, and get the watering right. Um, you know, I, as I started my houseplant journey, um, you know, I would read a lot that overwatering is the main killer for plants. So that made me kind of paranoid. And so I think for a long time I was actually underwatering this, so it wasn't really growing. But now I think I've got it down, so it seems to be um, putting out new growth. So hopefully this will turn into a giant monster someday. And then down here, um, I can't recall if this is an asparagus fern, but um, again, this was just a, a tiny little uh, little plant that we got at like Home Depot or something. And um, I just love how um, kind of light and feathery these leaves are. It just, it just kind of gives off a really kind of boho vibe, which I really enjoy. So, you know, um, I find that this one, if I put next to a window, you know, it gets backlit too much and you, it almost kind of disappears. So keeping it a little further away so you can actually appreciate the leaves, I think is, is nice. Um, and then over here, we've got a ton of other plants. Um, I think, you know, a lot of us sort of suffer from the same condition, which is like you buy a plant and you're like, oh, this looks nice. Maybe I'll get one more. And then before you know it, it just turns into a giant collection that um, you struggle to maintain. But, um, but you know, it is what it is. And so I don't have any regrets. So um, you'll, you'll notice here we've got um, kind of along the sides of this bookshelf some, um, this is the um, Raphrophora tetrasperma plant. And then um, another type of climbing philodendron that, um, that I got at a plant auction. So, you know, this one um, has climbed all the way up and now it's actually hitting the wall up there. And then the, um, the mini monstera is starting to take over, um, climb up here as well. And then um, on this other side, we've got, um, this is a philodendron Florida beauty. And so it's climbing up on that side and you can kind of see that it's sort of clambered over and kind of come over here and somehow it's reached the window. So um, again, I just love how wild and crazy the climbing plants get if you let them and it just, it just makes it feel very um, just, you know, jungly and, and I really, really like that feeling. Um, up here on this little shelf here, um, this is actually a fake uh, burro tail or donkey tail. Um, I actually bought these fake ones. I have got a couple of fake ones because I was having a hard time finding a real one. Um, I finally found a real one, but it hasn't grown yet to where it's trailing. So I've just got this here for now. I just kind of like how the, it sort of softens the hard edges of the shelving. And then, um, you know, some, on some of my shelves, I like to have stuff that is not plants. So here I've got like a little butterfly and a dragonfly. Um, some little kind of glass vessels. And then this is a lawn ornament. Um, this is a Native American beaver, I think, totem. And so, um, you know, I just, I thought it was really beautiful. So I brought it home. And then here under, on this shelf, we've got, um, this is an Anthurium, my uh, Monstera lamp that I covered in another video. And then here, this is a little water garden that we got um, at World Market. And so, you know, came with like the little seeds and stuff. And so we got that going. And I just think it looks really beautiful. This, this little display, I just, I just find really, really nice. Um, here, if I move this leaf out of the way. So these are um, little cactus and some more air plants. And these two pots that were made by my friend, Mikkel. Um, he's a potter um, from the Czech Republic. And, 
makes these really beautiful ceramic pieces and so I asked him to to make me a couple and, and he did so I really I really love these and then this little dish is also um, uh, from Chris's mom that she got on her tr on her trip to Africa so um, that's also really nice to have very beautiful and then here um, just to kind of set the the pots off I've got this like piece I think this is just like a piece of maple wood or something but I like how it just kind of makes the display its own little thing you know kind of create some boundaries here um, which I think is nice okay so here below that we've got some more plants um, this is another little peperomia plant um, calathea which is um, sometimes I think of it as the Ted Lasso plant so if you've seen that show there's one of the characters that has his little plant and I think it's this one um, this is a terrarium so this we filled with uh, mosses out from uh, out at the tiny house and then I put like a little button fern in there so um, you know I think um, we had some algae growth I think um, during the summer it got too much light and, and then it kind of started growing algae so at some point I might have to clean that up a little bit but for now it's fine and then these are also um, we got on a trip to Mexico they're little carved they're uh, gourds that are carved with these really beautiful designs which I really love okay so moving on see here we have um, this is English ivy you know, um, a lot of people might have trouble with, if you're someone that's prone to having spider mites on your plants, I, I think um, that's really susceptible, but thankfully we haven't had problems here. And then this is a lipstick plant. Um, and then you'll notice kind of tucked in here, this is a reproduction of the fertility statue from Indiana Jones and is it the Temple of Doom? No, um, Raiders of the Lost Ark, yeah. So Chris found this on a trip to Disneyland and he had to have it. So that's why this is here. Um, uh, I can confirm that this one does not um, make booby traps go off if you move it. So we're very thankful about that. Okay, so here, this is another philodendron. Um, this one um, unfortunately got mealybugs really bad. So I had to cut it back all the way. And now it's putting out new growth. This one is the philodendron celloum. Um, so I'm I'm hoping that it'll get you know big and bushy like it used to be. Um, yeah, we've just had really unfortunate luck with with mealy bugs. Um, so you know if you don't have them, consider yourself lucky. Um, this is a cast iron plant. This is the uh, Milky Way uh, cultivar. So I think it's so beautiful. Um, I got this, I ordered these online, I think last year and, um, you know, they've it, it, taken a while to start kind of putting out new growth, but I think they're, they're starting to get there. So they're, um, it'll be really nice once it's fully grown. <laughs> okay. So if we move on to this little, um, little table here, so we've got a ficus audrey and, um, I think this. This might be an asparagus fern, actually, now that I think about it. Um, and then we've got a um, neon pothos. So the neon pothos, unfortunately, again, I'm trying really hard not to complain about mealybugs too much, but um, they seem to be really attracted to the pothos plants. So it, I noticed that it's dropped some leaves, so I'm hoping I can salvage it. But um, these three came like as a, I think, I think it was like a Mother's Day planter thing um, at our local nursery, and it was cheaper than buying the plant separate. So we just um, bought it and right now we, we have them all together like they came, but we might, uh, might end up having to um, separate them out once they get too big. This is, this is doing nice and it's putting out new growth. So that's, that's nice. Um, here we've got a cactus um, and some other, um, gosh, I'm not even sure what this is. Oh, oh it's an agave, that's right. Um, you know, this is, again, part of the journey of, of learning how to be a plant parent. Um, when I bought this cactus, I, I didn't have it in the right light. So there was actually two of them and one ended up dying off. Um, and uh, it wasn't until I, I kind of put all these plants in the south-facing window to, to get them more light that it started putting out new growth. So 
um, you know, I mean, you kind of, you know, learn as you go, but, um, you know, there may have been a few plant casualties. Um, the same thing with this um, Euphorbia. So I bought this um, many years ago, and same thing. I didn't have it in bright enough light, so it was just kind of uh, languishing and not really doing anything, and it wasn't until I started uh, that I put it here in this south-facing window that it started putting out all this new growth, so I'm very excited to see. Um, and I also love, I'm, I have it in this little Mexican pot as a planter, so um, I, I like that. And then here, this is another cutting of a philodendron Brazil that I got at my local plant shop and in my favorite little sloth, um, little holding this, you know, uh, sloth holder for this test tube. <laughs> um, sloths are my, definitely my spirit animal. So um, anything that I can find that's got them, I really, really enjoy. And then this, um, gosh, I can't remember what the name of this plant is. This was gifted to me by a friend um, who didn't have um, the right lighting conditions for it. It's a it's a uh, plant from Africa, I believe. But uh, um, so I, I took it on, and I'm I'm hoping that once spring gets here, then it'll start doing better. And then I've got like another kind of aloe plant, a another um, orchid that isn't blooming, and then my um, oxalis triangularis, the regular green version, and then the the uh, purple version. So these, um, we have a um, product rep that comes by our office and we'll bring little tiny uh, plants of these like every, I think, you know, around um, St. Patrick's Day or something. So um, that's where this one came from. And then um, this one I got at the nursery. And then this, um, this little plant I had gotten at Ikea many years ago and it had kind of died off and I just had the pot in the basement. Uh, and then we noticed that it was like s barely hanging on. It was like a little tiny cutting. So I brought it upstairs and then, you know, now it's, it's, it's grown into this nice, beautiful, um, I think it's like a climbing aloe or, so, or something like that. I'm not entirely sure. Um, okay, so if we look down here, so um, this was also another project that we did fairly recently um, this shelf we built and stained it and then put in grow lights underneath so this is just kind of the catch-all for all kinds of stuff um, starting over here we've got our Christmas cactus and I'm gonna apologize for the creaky floors but this is a hundred year old house so we'll just have to deal with it um, yeah Christmas cactus and then you'll see a whole bunch of orchids um, non-blooming orchids so um, I think that's my New Year's resolution is to um, kind of learn more about how to get them to rebloom. And then this here, this is a little um, succulent in a really fun mouse pot made by my friend Lloyd. So I, I just think this is really, really cute. So I, I had to get one. And then next to that, we've got another succulent in this little elephant planter and a little frog reading the newspaper. <laughs> um, Again, another succulent here. I think this one I got at a big box store. Um, I'm impressed that I've been able to keep that alive because I tend to have actually terrible luck with succulents. Another orchid, and then this is supposed to be a watermelon peperomia. Um, it was kind of like sickly when I bought it at a big box store and it was the last one, so I figured I'd take a chance. And it's just been really strange. Um, I mean, this is the best it's looked, but it's never looked great. So I'm hoping that, um, you know, it'll eventually turn into what we all expect a watermelon peperomia to look like. And then here, this is a polka dot plant. Um, this one, it's really beautiful, but it tends to get really kind of long and gangly. And so we often have to kind of trim it back. Um, part of it, it's like if it's not getting enough light it'll just kind of send out offshoots I guess looking for that light so now that we have it here under the grow lights um, I'm hoping that that will help kind of keep it more kind of bushy looking and and, um, and once it gets kind of larger then we can put it up by window this is my um, other donkey tail the real donkey tail plant um, so it seems to be doing okay uh, again once I'm anxiously looking for forward to when it grows long enough that it's trailing so I can swap it out uh, for the fake version. And then like another aloe plant here. 
And then here, you know, you've got, I've got my um, collection of um, quartz and amethyst and stuff. Um, this one, I got at a garage sale for like three bucks. So I was very happy with that score. Okay, so if we move up from there. Okay, so here, this is a philodendron Xanadu. Um, this I ordered, I think, on online. Um, I can't remember what the, the place was, but it seems to be doing okay. And then, um, of course, like the main star here of this space is our giant bird of paradise plant. Uh, this plant was here when we bought the house. Um, it was in a smaller pot and it wasn't this big, but uh, so we've since repotted it and now it's just gotten gigantic um, to the point where like the leaves, uh, this one up here actually <laughs> broke because it just like shot up and like it hit the ceiling. So you can see kind of, I was just sort of taking over everything. Um, I don't know what I'm gonna do if it gets any bigger because um, you know, I, I just, I, I don't know. So um, we'll see what happens, but it's just, you know, really nice to have this giant um, plant here in the corner. And of course, you know, that's where the monkey lamp hang, hangs out. So, um, you know, and again, this one was a little bit of a, just from being paranoid about overwatering, I think I underwatered it for a bit, but I think I finally got it down. So um, as evidenced by um, all these giant leaves that are here. So um, yeah, so that's, you know, obviously we've got all the, all the plants near the window, um, but I figured I might as well show the rest of the dining room um, while we're here. So on this side, um, we've got, well, this is actually a beautiful yellow orchid that I thought was real. <laughs> um, I picked it up at Home Depot and I was in a hurry, I guess. So I didn't realize that it was plastic. And so I like babied it and like cared, for, you know, cared for it uh, for a couple of weeks before realizing that it was fake. So, um, you know, but this corner of the room doesn't get much light. So it kind of just makes sense to have something like that here. And then um, our dog portraits, which we've had for many years now, which I really love. Um, this one is by a French, it's a print of a uh, painting done by a French painter whose name I can't remember. Um, but this was way before the advent of those like services on Facebook where they Photoshop your, uh, your pet onto like portraits. So um, uh, annoyingly, like these days, you know, a lot of people will ask, oh, is that your dog? And it's not our dog. Um, it's some stranger's dog, but it's still cute. And then we've got another one, another painting on the other side, which I can show you shortly. Um, this is an in-progress uh, building of Lego Starry Night. So this was a gift from Chris um, for Christmas. And so we're putting it together. So we still kind of have the rest of it to go, but um, I'm really excited about that because I, you know, we both have a love of nerdy things. And um, yeah, I think it'll be really great once it's done. Um, here we've got a cane that Chris bought at the Scottish, what was it, the Scottish Highland Games uh, here in Tacoma. And then here in our beautiful hutch, um, I don't know if you saw the dining room episode, but I uh, wallpapered these panels onto the hutch, which I think turned out really nice. Um, again, this is the, the other fake um, donkey tail plant, just again, because it doesn't get much light in this area of the room. And then um, up there is a fairly recent acquisition. This is the Raven light, which I think is really pretty. Uh, it just kind of hangs out there. I think, you know, I like to think it's just looking over us in the dining room. Um, and then here we've got just a collection of things. Um, these are cuttings of um, a Marble Queen Pothos that got um, mealy bugs. And so I ended up having to chop everything off of the mother plant. Um, and I have these cuttings over here. It's not great, you know, for long term, but I just want to keep them as a, at, a, at a safe distance from the rest of the plants until I can be sure that there's no more mealy bugs on here. Um, oh yes. And so, um, you know, so we'll see what that ends up or what ends up happening with that. And then, um, here kind of continuing on the, uh, nerdy theme, <laughs> we've got, uh, a painting of Monet's, um, I think woman with a parasol, but instead of the woman, it's Darth Vader, which I love. 
And then we've got a little TIE fighter here, which I think is Kylo Ren's. And then the um, Millennium Falcon little model there. And then this is my little light that I got at my uh, uh, trip to, during my trip to New York at the um, Museum of Modern Art. Yeah, so, you know, again, not really much plants here. Um, I may, you know, we have a couple of small grow lights that I might end up um, setting up, you know, just to have a little bit of green here, but I think that um, for now this will do. Okay, before we move on though, I just wanna point out our fabulous built-in cabinets here in our dining room, which were the first thing we saw when we first saw the house. And so that, this is what made me fall in love with the house um, when we first walked in. So I just had to point those out, even though they're not plant related. All right, if we come this way, there's only a few plants left. So coming here into our kitchen, um, just FYI, I haven't shown our kitchen before just because we haven't done anything with the space, but hopefully this coming year we'll do a refresh or something and I can show you more about it. But um, okay, so if we come in through here, so these are some of the plants that um, unfortunately are dealing with mealybug issues. So I've kind of got them separate from the other ones just to keep an, an eye on them. Um, this is the mother Monstera plant that we got. And actually, you know what? I see a mealybug right there. So um, clearly this, the, this situation is not um, resolved yet. Um, this is also another offshoot from that same Monstera plant. Um, you know, again, when you buy stuff like these or uh, Monsteras from big box stores, they are really planted well. Um, so they, as they grow, they just kind of go every which way. So I decided to split them up. This one unfortunately also had mealybugs, so I'm treating that one as well. And then here we've got our um, Monstera adansonii, which had been doing really well. Um, lately it's looking a little tired, so I may, um, I may try and repot it or something, so we'll see. Um, and then this is a Hoya um, australis, which um, I used to have out in the front room, but unfortunately the mealybugs found this one as well. So I've been really, um, it's been a real huge bummer because this was one of my favorite plants. Um, but until I get rid of them, I can't, um, I can't risk further contamination. Um, and then lastly, we have this tiny little um, marble queen pothos, which again was really long. Um, and then after the mealies got to it, I basically had to cut everything off and, um, just, you know, just to, just to be on the safe side. And, um, so hopefully this will grow back. You can see here, um, the roots are coming out. So this definitely needs to be repotted, but, um, but yeah, so this is, this is kind of the, uh, the plant collection, uh, as of winter 2024. So we'll see what the, the new year brings and, um, whether we end up getting anymore. I, I don't know if I can get more plants. Cause at this point I feel like it's, it's becoming a, a challenge to, um, <laughs> to water everything and take care of everything. And, you know, there's a certain point where you cross that threshold and it just becomes more of a chore than, um, than something, you know, pleasurable to do. But, um, but then again, I said that like 30 plants ago and here we are. So we'll see how that, um, how that turns out. All right, so this was our 2024 winter houseplant home tour. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, you know, my hope for you is that your space is wonderful and cozy and warm, and I feel like plants do a lot for that. Um, but, uh, but yeah, so hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you did, please hit that like button and consider subscribing. It would really help the channel. Um, yeah, so we'll see you guys next video. Take care.